Hello, my name is Chelo. In this video, I want to tell you about the violation of Bell inequalities from random mutually unbiased bases. A Bell test is an experiment that is used to demonstrate the violation of a Bell inequality. In the simplest case, we have two parties, Alice and Bob, who share some entangled state. Each party will perform two measurements where each measurement has two outcomes. This leads to some quantum correlation, and then you can check whether it violates the CHSH inequality or not. Bell violations are interesting because they are device independent. This means that we can determine it just from the observed data. This leads to many useful applications, which include the generation of certified random numbers, the distribution of a shared secret key between two distant parties, or to verify that a quantum device is functioning properly. In this work, we are interested in the question of whether pair violations can be obtained by Alice and Bob who do not have a common reference Previous work have shown that this is possible with the CHSH inequality. So if Alice and Bob share a two qubit maximum entangled state, and then they perform a randomly rotated set of Pauli operators, uh, X, Y, and Z, then this leads to a violation of 100% of CHSH. Here we want to ask, what happens if you do the same kind of random measurements for tangled states in higher dimensions? We say that two bases B1 and B2 are mutually unbiased if taking the inner product squared of one vector from the first basis and another vector from the other basis will give you one over D. So uh, one, one way to think about this is if you prepare some quantum state as one of the states in the first basis, but then you perform the measurement in the second basis, then you get a uniform distribution. Okay, an example of a set of mobs in dimension two is the eigenstates of the Pauli operators, which on the block sphere is represented by three orthogonal directions. For Qtrits, there's a simple construction. If you take uh, omega to be the root of unity, then we have these four bases that we can construct that will represent a set of four maps for Qtrits. Here we want to consider the Bell violations for two inputs and D outcomes and the canonical Bell inequality for this scenario is called CGLMP. If you write the observables with eigenvalues zero up to D minus one, then we can write the CGLMP in this form. However, you don't actually need to choose a particular Bell inequality. If you know the extreme points of your local set, then it's possible to test whether a correlation is going to violate the Bell inequality or not, just by running some linear program. So the linear program tries to mix your correlation with a uniform distribution, and the largest possible weight determines whether it's non-local or not. If this weight is less than one, then we know that the correlation must be non-local. In order to estimate the Bell violation from random mobs, we perform the following numerical experiment. So in each trial, Alice and Bob will fix a certain number of mobs. So here, K random mobs. And since we are testing violation of Bell inequalities with two inputs, they have to consider all the Bell values for picking two mobs out of the K set of mobs. The one that gives the largest Bell value will give the value for that trial. 
And uh, in this experiment, you just have to repeat this many, many times. And the fraction of trials with a violation will determine uh, the estimate of the probability of violation. So here is an example of the data that we get for Qtrits. Here, the lines without markers are for the CGLMP, and the lines with markers are for the visibilities obtained from the linear program. So here, this is a distribution of the visibilities. As you can see, if you have four mobs, then this distribution with the green diamond is looks like it's almost all in this region with visibility less than one. So this means that we have a very high probability of violation. Here, we also tested whether we can get bell violations if the state is not maximally entangled. So if you write the state in the Schmidt basis, then the, you can have two angles alpha and beta to parameterize it. And we get here the probability of violation for different values of alpha and beta. So alpha actually goes from zero to pi to, to something that's uh, close to pi over four and similarly for beta. The maximally entangled state is at this point at the top rightmost of this plot. The star indicates uh, the non-maximally entangled state that gives the largest violation of the CGLMP inequality. But what you see here is that there's actually a large region of states where you can get a bell violation is very close to 100%. So here's the data represented in table form. Here, number of mobs is the number of mobs that Alice and Bob will fix at the beginning of each trial. CGLMP percent is the probability of violation of the CGLMP inequality. Here, the WNVIS is the white noise visibility, so the probability of bell violation computed from the linear program. Here is the clopper pierced interval at significance level of 5%. Uh, so this is just, if you consider each trial to be a sequence of Bernoulli trials for our simulations, then this gives you sort of like the error bars for the estimate of the probability of violation. Uh, and the size of this interval depends on the number of trials that you consider. As you can see here, when you have D plus one mobs in dimension D, so four for three and five for four. Then we have probability of violation that's indicated to be 100 star, meaning it's very close to 100%, but strictly less. So there's a few trials where we don't get violations. Similarly, we have this data for dimension five and six. Uh, and as you can see, again, when you consider the maximal number of mobs, you get a probability that's very close to 100%. Here is uh, a plot of uh, the probability of bell violation for, div for different uh, dimensions. Like, so each line represents uh, a given Hilbert space dimension. And then we vary the number of mobs that Alice and Bob will measure. As you might expect, so you will probably expect an increasing trend because if Alice and Bob perform more mobs, in some sense, they are able to consider more possible combinations. Therefore, you sort of increase the probability that you can violate some better inequality. This is uh, a plot, again, of the opposite trend. So here, this time, we fix the number of mobs that Alice and Bob will measure and vary the dimension. And here, we get the opposite trend. So as you increase the dimension, but you fix the number of mobs, then you have less and less violation, which seems to say that uh, 
sort of like you see a fewer combinations relative to the number of possible combinations with increasing damage. So here are our conclusions. So we've seen that unlike in the qubit case, the violation of the CGLMP is not enough to show some violation that's close to 100%. We need to consider all possible two input Bell inequalities. In that case, we get very close to 100% in dimensions three, four, and five. But actually, if we consider more than just two input Bell inequalities, if we also consider three input Bell inequalities for Qtrids, four input Bell inequalities for uh, Q quarts, and so on, we can actually show that this probability of violation is actually 100%. So this gives us the possibility that whenever you measure D plus one mobs on a maximally entangled state, then the resulting correlation will violate some bell inequality. Thank you for your attention.